Retro Rewind, 20 years of radio history, celebrating over 30 years of the greatest songs ever made. Hi, this is Rick Springfield, and you're listening to Retro Rewind with Dave Harris. Retro Rewind! Retro Rewind! Retro Rewind. One on one. I'll miss that someday. I think, did you tell me that you wrote that about your dad? Well, no, actually, Matt and I wrote that about, da- Matt, it was, the, the impetus was Matt's dad, because okay. Matt's dad's passed away now, but he was very sick when the song was written, and, and it was talking about, uh, uh, we've had the both similar experiences with, with our dads, you know, or with any, anyone that you live your life with. Yeah. There are things that, that bug your bottom and things that drive you crazy, but to me, when my dad died, a lot of those kind of silly little things like that were the things that that were very dear to me after yeah. he'd gone you know and and Matt felt the same way he knew he was gonna miss the stuff that that he would get on his nerves sometimes with his dad so it was it's that kind of a thing how you uh, uh, you know when they're gone you're only gonna remember everything in a in a you know in a ball of white light and, yeah. and it's uh, and it's dreading that moment too, but you know it's an inevitable moment. You know it's going to come. I think it's one of the, the better tracks on, on the album. You know, I think the whole album's good. But uh, you know, very tongue in cheek with some of the lyrics there. Uh-huh. You know, uh, you, you think they're going to go one way, and it's it comes out the, the other side. And from a songwriting standpoint, you know, I you know, kudos <laughs> to you, man. I was like, all right, uh, very very good song. Uh, Venus and Overdrive, of course, the, uh, the title track. Um, you know, you, I could hear what, you know, today's artists, uh, I, I could hear. I don't think this their influence on you, but I think it's maybe... No, I'm definitely influenced by everything not. I hear. Absolutely. In yeah. fact, I heard some song. It was, I heard some song with a great feel, and and, uh, uh, and I kind of liked the song. So I went, went straight to my music room and laid down a drum beat, kind of similar drum beat, and then launched into a song that 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 song inspired. So it was definitely, the initial vibe was definitely inspired. We made it a lot heavier than the original one. The original one was a very dance kind of thing. But you know, I'm very attracted to any kind of music that I like, and there's just certain dance songs I like too. But uh, we went in and made, heav- heavied it up to suit the rest of the songs in the album, more guitar oriented. But it was very much, uh, I was, a lot of these are inspired by people that, you know, uh, new new bands and stuff that were inspired by older bands right. and you know we I mean even watch Victoria's Secret we were kind of thinking well you know Fountains of Wayne kind of yeah you know we're inspired by by the Jesse's girl kind of cars yeah, thing absolutely. so and we're going well well let's why don't we do that again let's you know so yeah and uh, Victoria what's uh, Venus and Overdrive was a similar was a, a taking from you know stuff that I heard recently. I listened to a lot of stuff. You know, and maybe we'll talk a little bit real quick about how you map out a song because you know I've heard I think we've a lot of us have heard uh, the original demo for Jesse's Girl. You kind of laid it all out, you know, on the drum track. And but you know, obviously it's not that different from I, I don't think the uh, f- the famous version that we know. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you try to keep most of your songs that you write in, in that kind of uh, structure? You know. I, I demo really thoroughly, Matt and I both, and I've always demoed really thoroughly. Yeah. I mean, even with Jesse's Girl, it was a four-track machine, and I had cushions. I couldn't, didn't have a drum set, and I couldn't really play drums, so I just had a cushions that I beat on, you know, an EQ to make him sound like a kick and a snare. Yeah. And uh, actually, Nigel Olsen, I've do, been doing that for, for years, so Nigel Olsen is a great drummer, yeah. playing with Elton John originally, and he's, I think he's back with him. Back, yeah. I did a record with Nigel playing drums, and the demos were, again, with the cushions, and he's listening, he goes, Who's playing drums on that? <laughs> <laughs> so it's full of drummers, but uh, That's so great. yeah, I'd lay it out, and, and you know, I have very different ideas for arrangements. And when I'm thinking, I'm always thinking keyboards and counterparts and everything. So, and and I usually stick close to the demo, but try and improve on it. And if, if Venus actually in Overdrive is one of those ones where we really went a little different with it and uh, heavied it up, and 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 there were horns on it and everything that we, you, took out. you know. But yeah, most of them, most of them follow, because the initial inspiration, I believe in the initial inspiration. So yeah, yeah, okay. that's, that's very powerful and, and certainly have the ability now with home recording to lay it down real fast. I ra- lay down the songs as soon as I write them so they're completely fresh and all the ideas are still there. Yeah. That, you know, three months later you've completely forgotten and you listen back to it and go, wow. And it sounds almost like a new song to you. Yeah, and you know what, and you were telling me about how this album was 
recorded in about a month, right? Mm -hmm. About 30 days or yeah, so? Yeah, less which, than a month, yeah. And like maybe... Uh, uh, Two albums before that were nine months and 11 months, respectively. Yeah, right, yeah. right, almost a year. So, yeah, it was horrible. Uh, was, was that... Did you... Well, why did you do that? Did, did you feel that... Because I was... I didn't want to... I was sick of it. It just drives me insane. And by the time... It. Halfway through it, you hate the songs and you right. never want to hear them again. So you're just you're not going to put... You know, and, I've, and I would I nitpick, I'd record the guitars three times over. And so this time we just said, we're just going to lay it down. Because Working Class Dog, I did that. Laid it down and left, went on the next song. Didn't have time to do anything. Yeah, yeah. Just laid it down, went on the next song. So we did that with that. And, and it was great. And you listen to stuff and go, oh, God, yeah, that's a great part. And you're not like worn out and, and you're still excited about it. So I, I'll, I'll always do that. I just did a lullaby album that took uh, 24 days, you know. Wow. So... Uh, and we're writing a new uh, rock record now, and we're hoping to break the record. Right on. Right. Well, you know, it's just great that, you know, if it's a new approach for you, if it works, then uh, then go for it. Because I think, like I said, the writing and production of this album um, uh, is very, is very is, is amazing. Um, you, you know, uh, Oblivious, I know we talked about uh, earlier, um, and I told you how much I really enjoy that song. If you, if you, you know, want a radio person's perspective on that song, it's got a lot of hooks. And mm -hmm. I know that you said that maybe a song that, that Matt had worked on uh, because I think of his mother, right? Is that right? And brought and to you. And Sah also Sahara. Yeah, right. Yeah, we, we kind of included both of them in it, but it was, yeah. It's very, uh, this album is actually a lot about death. Well, <laughs> but you know what? It, it's a part of life. Yeah. And, and no, but it's a celebration of it. It and, is. And as it's well. stuff that, you know, like I, I don't want to still be writing songs about. You know, going out on Saturday night and drinking and getting laid. I mean, there are 18-year-olds who write better songs like that now than not. You know, that's why I hear like older bands that are still writing this about the same things they wrote about when they were in their early 20s. But there's so much different stuff going on. You have to write about what is going on. I believe you have to write about what's going on. I mean, we still like to get laid. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but you know, there's other st stuff going on, and people are, you know, and we have we've lost some great people and. Uh, yeah. So you're, we try and write about what's meaningful to us. Real quick about... Uh, we're just Sorry, am I allowed to say laid? You can say whatever you want on, on, on this show, man. Uh, swing, swing it, sister. You know, listening to that on the way down, I think for the first time... Tell me if I'm wrong here, and, and it won't be the first time I, I have been wrong, but I hear a little bit of honky-tonk woman, uh, hot legs, Rod Stewart, Rolling Stones. It's very Rolling Stones-y. We, 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 uh, we came up with uh, the track... And I actually edited it. The track was actually quite a bit different. The original track we did had a very heavy riff in it, and, and the, the, the main part of the, what became the main part of the song was kind of like a tag at the end. And I really liked that, so I edited the, the piece around, and then we wrote a song around that. Uh, and so it ended up being kind of stonesy, but uh, yeah. The reason I say the Rod Stewart thing is just I think some of the chants or the, you know, off the mic kind of, oh. you know. <laughs> that kind of stuff. Well, you know? a lot of that's actually from the demo. Oh, really? Yeah, because uh, you can't recreate that kind of stuff, and yeah. I was in, in the vibe of doing it and, and excited about it, and that, that thing comes out, and then I tried to do it uh, in the studio when we were recording, and it just sounded, I go, no, that sounds so fake. It sounds like I'm going, sitting there going, woo! Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. So, okay, so yeah. we just took the, the track from the demo where I ad-libbed all that stuff and uh, put it in the track. Let's re talk real quick about uh, about your live show now you, you, you just you know you tour a lot mm -hmm. and uh, it's something evidently you must enjoy right um, and, and, and you have to have a lot of energy I guess to, mm -hmm. to do that and you're in good shape I have a lot of energy I have so much energy I can't sit and watch television I have I just can't sit still which is you know drives my wife insane and sometimes me too but it's, it's just uh, the way I'm built you know but um, it's great because I love to work. I'm a workaholic, and uh, and if I wasn't a workaholic, I'd be an alcoholic. So well, it's a good choice. Glad that you're a workaholic. <laughs> um, so it, it, you uh, it, you plan to do? I mean, you, you tour how many times out of the year? Uh, like 80 to 100 dates, maybe. Yeah. And of course, people still want to know if you're going to do your your TV stuff and. Yeah, yeah, we are. We're gonna, this year, this stuff going to be coming up. It's all right now on Retro Rewind. Retro Rewind.